Hey there, Aliens fans. This is Wesatron. Today we're going to be taking a look at NECA's Aliens Private Rico Frost action figure. This is of the uh, newest wave, and it also includes uh, Vasquez, which was the, uh, the big uh, holdout for this wave, the one that everybody was waiting to see. Um, but personally, I really like the Marines, and I like that we're getting to see Frost in here too. It's pretty cool. He doesn't have a huge role in the film, but he does have somewhat of one. Uh, standard clamshell packaging from NECA. You can see some of the accessories, but not all of them within here. Uh, we've got the Aliens logo up at the top, of course, and then uh, down here, Aliens 30th Anniversary on the side. Uh, some shots from the helmet cams, um, which is pretty cool. On the back, we've got a little bio about uh, Rico, which is pretty cool. And an uh, interesting thing, uh, the actor who played him, his real name is uh, Rico Ross, so that was based on uh, his name. Um, as far as I know, I, I hope he didn't change his name to match the character, but yeah, at the bottom we see all the figures in the wave. On the bottom, uh, we see the uh, sculpt, all the credits down here, paint as we come to expect, Wardell and Trap. Uh, sculpt is Jason Fraley from back in the day. Um, so uh, yeah, he's, uh, I guess he built the original bodies that uh, these were all built on, which is really cool. Um, I believe this may be the first time that these figures actually came with a removable helmet, um, other than the Newt SDCC exclusive. So uh, that's pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and get him out of packaging and see what he's like. And here we have Private Frost out of packaging, and he is a great looking figure. Uh, they did a great job. I mean, a lot of this is reused, granted, um, but the new parts combined with the excellent sculpt make this a really, really cool looking figure. Uh, as far as our uh, accessories, he has got the uh, flamethrower, same one we saw come with uh, Windrix. A lot of this is actually similar sculpt to Windrix. Uh, very nicely detailed, very nicely painted. No, nothing to complain about here. It looks great. I really like it. I guess it's an M4 carry handle on top or M16 carry handle. Um, pretty cool canister of uh, gasoline, kerosene. I'm not sure what they use in the future to uh, ignite their flamethrowers, but they've got it. Uh, he also comes with a satchel charge, which uh, honestly I do not remember if we've seen this before. It seems like we may have, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but it looks great. They did a nice job with the lining. There's a little bit of paint on there and some really nice sculpt work uh, with a paint wash on that to kind of bring out those details. So a very good job there. And just so we are clear, the strap is not long enough to go around the body. That's just uh, something that can kind of hang from his hand. Um, he's got the same light that comes with all the Marines and that just plugs into his armor here on the back. Um, this is actually one of the first ones where it plugs in really well. I mean, it gets completely flush against the back, so uh, that's great. I've never had really great success with getting those in and to stay in place, so that's really cool. Uh, we've got his pistol in his holster here on the side. This is a functioning holster. And pull that out, and that little flap will actually stay down if you lock it in place. Um, and the pistol kind of looks like a uh, PPK in terms of the uh, overall uh, style of it. Um, this is actually a, an HK VP70 um, and they did put just a little bit of paint up here on the forward sight uh, to make it lit up so that's pretty cool. Uh, very nice detail, they did a really good job with the um, texture on the grip and uh, I like uh, that they've got the texture on the slide as well so really really nice little piece here. Yeah very cool. As I said that just slips down really easily into his holster and then you can just sort of pin it closed or he can pose with it just as well. But I uh, kind of just getting it out of the way for now. Uh, his last accessory, which is probably what I think is his coolest, is his removable helmet. I've always wanted to see removable helmets in the line. NECA said that they couldn't do it, uh, I guess because of the hair sculpts, but um, they did it for this one and I'm really glad. I would love to see them release uh, Hudson and Hicks down the line. Um, just just for this um, and there were also some issues with the, that first run of figures so I, I wouldn't mind having them again um, he's got a little pack here on the back of his helmet a uh, little I guess this is either light or a camera I assume camera um, and then just nice paintwork all throughout and uh, it fits on his head very well it just pops right down on it and you can see it doesn't look like too gaudy or ridiculous. It doesn't look massively oversized. It adds a nice uh, element of shadow to the face, which is really cool. Um, these parts here are very soft plastic. 
Uh, so they don't hurt too much, but if you start getting to moving around and stuff, you know, it might pop the helmet up and you just kind of have to work it back down and make sure you work these pieces into a position where they're not going to uh, make the helmet pop. So yeah, not bad at all. I really like this. They did a good job. Um, theoretically, this being a chin strap, they actually have the uh, locking mechanism. Theoretically, you could lock that under his chin. Let's see if we can make that work. I'll bet that'll work if you mess with it enough. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it on camera just because it's finicky, but um, yeah, there is actually a, a latch here, and uh, you could totally make that lock under his chin if you wanted to. So that's pretty awesome, uh, especially at this scale. I mean, this is a one-tenth scale figure, so that's pretty cool. Now, the uh, likeness to a Rico Ross is very, very good. Um, they did a really, a really nice job. Um, uh, big features for him are his mouth and eyes, uh, and I think they replicated them both very, very well. The uh, armors are all a little unique in the uh, movies. So on his, he's got up here a uh, little piece on his shoulder that says, uh, let's see, when in doubt, nuke him. <laughs> Which is funny because he doesn't make it to the nuking later. Um, he's got on the front here... Uh, Frost, his name on the chest piece, and then a uh, heart with an arrow through it. It says uh, Heath. Um, it was speculated for a long time that uh, he might actually be uh, a gay marine, um, but uh, I believe that was debunked at some point by a producer or something. I'll see if I can find the story and if that's supposed to be short for Heather. Um, but I will look into that and see if I can find that out for sure. Uh, on the back, um, we've got, if we take this piece off, uh, some kind of art piece up here. Oh, uh, that's uh, Africa. Okay, so yeah, Africa and the face of a woman. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't notice that before because of all the colors and how they mix together, but that's a pretty neat little design. I like that. And uh, on the bottom it says, uh, One Universe, Ride or Die, Orange Jim Forever. And uh, I'll see... Oh, Orange Men. Orange Men Forever, if I'm reading that correctly. I'll, uh, I'll look that up and uh, see if I can figure out what that's all about. But, uh, yeah, overall, very, very nicely done. The armor is reused, uh, like we've said before. He's got a new uh, uh, piece that holds all of his uh, oh, his belt, I guess I should say, uh, because it's got the uh, holster on it. We've got uh, lots of torches here on his belt. Um, these little capsule things, which are always in sci-fi movies for one reason or another. Um, big box pouches on the back, and this is all flexible so it doesn't get in the way of articulation or anything. You know, it's it's totally flexible. Same with his shoulder pads, very flexible, um, and the actual armor itself. Um, it may be difficult to see. Yeah, here I got an edge. You can see that it's very flexible also. It's very nicely done. Uh, nice pouches and everything. It's the same body we saw on Hicks and Hudson before. Great, great job on the armor paint and the uh, scuffing and everything. It all looks really good. Bottom of the boots are pretty well detailed, and we do have peg holes. Overall, very, very nice work on this figure. It's cool that they got to use the uh, long sleeve marine body again. I was looking, I really liked that on uh, uh, Windrix, so I'm glad they brought it back. Now, uh, in terms of articulation, this guy is loaded. He's got a ball-jointed head with very nice range of motion. That face is kind of creeping me out, man. They did a really good job of making that look realistic. It just looks really good. Uh, yeah, great range on the head. Um, the arms can go all the way around despite this. Um, and they hinge out. This is a swivel hinge joint. They hinge out to about that far. We have got very tight elbow joints on this one in particular. Uh, get a little bit less than 90 degrees, I think, on both arms. Yeah, just a hair less than 90 degrees. And then a swivel out. And we have swivel hinges in the wrist, which have a pretty good range. The peg on this is really small, so I'm always a little reluctant to move it too hard too fast. So, um, But it, it seems like it's got a pretty decent range in it. Uh, we've got, I believe, two ball joints, one in the waist and one in the midsection, because you get a ton of motion out of this figure. So side to side is very good. Um, front and back, pretty good. Back isn't quite as good, but front is very good. So very nice work there. Uh, swivel hinges in the hips, 
go forward about that far. This is a rubber butt piece, so it doesn't uh, impede articulation too much. Goes back really far. Out to the side, super far for kung fu posing. And then uh, we've got swivels hidden up here underneath this so that you can still turn the leg in and out as well. Very cool. We've got double hinges in the knees. First point goes to about 90 degrees. And second point will take you about to there. So very cool. Now, an interesting point about the knees is that these knee pads actually do have a uh, like a soft plastic or rubber cable that goes back behind the leg. But because NECA carved out a piece into the joint, it doesn't actually hamper articulation there at all. Um, so it's not like pinning it from going any further or anything. They did a really good job with that design. So kudos to you, NECA. And then we've also got uh, ball joints in the feet. So they go in and out and back and forward. Very cool. And then a hinge in the toes. So you can pop his uh, toes up like that. So yeah, very articulated figure um, in the range of super articulated uh, for sure with the double knees and everything. Um, the only thing that would have made it more articulated is double hinged uh, elbows. But uh, I, I like that they decided to do swivel hinge elbows because of the rifle, it makes it a little easier to use. When you have to swivel up here towards the shoulder, a lot of times the biceps muscles can get in the way of the armor and it just makes it harder to pose. So I think overall that was a good call by NECA. And here we are with a couple more of the Marines and you can see uh, Frost fits in pretty well with all of them. Looks really nice. Um, He's much taller than Vasquez, which is great for her figure, great for his. He was a pretty tall dude. And then uh, Windrix over here, I said that um, they actually shared a lot of parts. Um, you can see that a little bit better now. Uh, very similar armor types, uh, the long sleeves. Um, they're more or less, not repaints of each other, but so similar that um, uh, you may as well call them a repaint. They did a really, really good job on the Windrix figure and uh, being able to translate that over to Frost really worked out for NECA. Uh, in terms of height, he is going to come in right at about six and three quarter inches tall, maybe a hair shorter than that, but yeah, right at about six and three quarter inches tall. So um, he's right in line with the uh, other figures in the wave. So very nice. Uh, I got this from TRU's website. As soon as I saw it pop up, it was $21.99 uh, for your $22. You get a very well articulated figure. You get the removable helmet, which I think is an excellent accessory. Um, not just because it's cool to have removable helmets, but because NECA executed it so well. Uh, it fits on great and it doesn't look ridiculous on him. Um, so yeah, kudos NECA. NECA, you did a great job there. Uh, you also get the flamethrower, satchel charge, the uh, uh, light piece that goes on the back, and you get the uh, VP70 in his holster back here uh, for $22. That is a great deal. Um, a lot of places are charging that much for uh, Marvel Legends, which while they may be slightly articulated better, um, they have nothing in terms of uh, sculpt and paint on NECA. Um, and of course, there's, it's also the fact that this is Aliens, which is just an awesome property on its own. So uh, yeah, this is a great action figure. $22 is a drop in the bucket compared to what he would be worth. I mean, if you ask me to fill out my ranks for $30 a piece, I'd probably still do it because this should, they're just great action figures. So uh, yeah, great job, NECA. Uh, once again, <laughs> they always succeed, it seems like, or at least lately they've been succeeding really well. So. That's it for this guy. If you have any questions or comments about him, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, any questions at all, I'll try to get as much information as I can about the uh, armor and everything and get that posted up as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I will talk to you later, guys. Bye.